Since her affiliation with Hitler and the Nazi Party as the film expert of the National Socialist Party, Lenny Reipensaw spent the rest of her life defending her work. Lenny emphasized repeatedly that she worked solely to further her career as an artist and that the editing techniques she mastered were simply meant to artistically express the intent of the position she was appointed, opposed to the popular opinion that she was a Nazi propagandist and sympathizer. Whether Lenny Reifenstahl was ever ready to admit her role in Nazi Germany or not, her Triumph of the Will documentary stands the test of time as one of the best propaganda films ever created. Lenny Reifenstahl began her film career first by starring in Arnold Funk's Mountain Genre Films. She was an instant sensation and became enticed by the idea of directing and producing her own films. Lenny began to study Funk's unique directing and editing techniques before attempting to create her own style. In 1932, while working on her first filming and self-editing experience, The Blue Light, Lenny became fascinated with Hitler. She reached out to him and shortly after meeting him for the first time, was commissioned for her first film of the Nazi party, Victory of Faith. Hitler found Victory of Faith to be extremely beneficial for promoting the Nazi party. He saw Lenny's expertise, particularly the effect she could create through her unique editing process, to be indispensable. He commissioned her to create two more films, resulting in the incriminating triumph of the will. Lenny would spend the rest of her life defending her affiliation with the Nazis in the creation of this film. While it was undoubtedly a powerful piece of propaganda and assisted Hitler in gaining political support, Lenny claimed that it was simply a documentary. Unable to understand how Triumph of the Will could possibly be associated with propaganda, Lenny further insisted that she was politically neutral and remained so throughout the war. How exactly, though, was it that a person working so closely with a Nazi party, whose projects were not only completely funded by the party, but a person who was also given access to unlimited resources for Nazi project projections, not politically associated with Hitler? This is the rest of the story. When Hitler began to take interest in Lenny Reifenstahl, the Socialist Party's Reich Minister of Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, became overwhelmed with jealousy. Goebbels' relationship with Hitler had recently begun to deteriorate due to the minister's extramarital habits. Hitler disagreed with the affairs Goebbels were participating in because he saw these actions as a threat to the motives of the Nazi party. When Goebbels finally decided he wanted a divorce, he went to Hitler seeking permission. Hitler denied this request, saying that it would reflect very poorly on the entire party and would highlight contradictions made by the party members. Due to this misalignment of ethics, Hitler detached himself from Goebbels and reestablished their relationship as purely professional. Goebbels, according to Lenny, saw Hitler's newfound interest in her as a threat to his own position within the party. Through her associations with Hitler, Lenny became very well acquainted with Goebbels. Their relationship, however, seemed to be very rocky and unclear. She claimed that Goebbels' jealousy was rooted in her relationship with Hitler. This jealousy was only enhanced by Hitler's repeated support of Lenny during her disputes with Goebbels. Lenny claimed to have always been at war with Goebbels, whereas his private diary entries tell another story. In his diaries, Goebbels wrote about his growing relationship with Lenny and how well she and his wife Magda got along. He wrote about their visits to the opera and Lenny's appearances at his private parties. During an interview for the documentary The Wonderful Horrible Life of Lenny Reifenstahl, however, Lenny became so enraged by the entries that she demanded the fielding come to a stop. She claimed to have no recollection of going to the opera house with Goebbels and Magda and that he wrote it to spite her. His hatred and jealousy of her relationship with Hitler was fueled by two things, she, she claimed. First, Goebbels was extremely jealous of the funding Hitler allotted to Lenny for her documentary projects. He saw her as a threat to his own title as Minister of Propaganda and feared that she might replace him. Secondly, Lenny claimed Goebbels was seeking revenge on her because she denied him romantically. Was it possible that Lenny denied Goebbels due to her secret romance with Hitler, the Führer himself? The Nazi party's leading lady, Lenny Reifenstahl, had won much of Hitler's attention. He saw her as indispensable and the perfect means of furthering the Nazi clause. Lenny, too, was a great admirer of Hitler and clearly voices admiration in her own memoir and in the documentary The Wonderful Horrible Life of Lenny Reifenstahl. She found him to be charismatic and was enthralled by the attractiveness of his assertion of power. 
Originally, she alleged, she had no interest in filming for Hitler, but the unlimited resources he would provide her to film, teamed with his charismatic personality, made him an offer too impossible to resist. While she maintained that their relationship was completely platonic and professional, Lenny regularly met with Hitler outside of the office and they dined together often. In addition, she was frequently seen at his side during political campaigns such as in Konski, Poland. Maintaining that their relationship was purely professional, however, was key to Lenny's defense after the war. If she was admittedly romantic with Hitler, then it would be apparent that she was a Nazi sympathizer, and not at all the innocent documentarian that she claimed. Whereas her political affiliations with the Nazi party become very clear to anyone who does a bit of research into her life and work, Lenny's private life is harder to decipher. Unfortunately for Lenny, the naive and innocent woman act that she put on, mind you, she was 31 years old when she began working with Hitler, didn't work when denying association with the Nazi party. Her attempts to cover up her personal relationships with both Hitler and Goebbels further added to the lies and only aided in revealing herself as unreliable. Her spin of lies constantly contradicted one another, and as she attempted to take on more faces than she could handle. While the truth of this twisted love triangle may never unravel themselves, one thing remains certain. Lenny Reifenstahl cannot be taken for her word, and it seems as though Shakespeare wrote Lenny into being well before her time in his lines, Methinks thou doth protest too much.